Okay, in this uh, second video for section 4.2, we're going to focus more on the graphs of the log functions, and especially focusing on the domains of these logarithm functions. We're all, I'm also going to show you a way to find the logarithm function algebraically by finding the inverse of the exponential function. Okay, so here's the graph of uh, f of x equals 2 to the x. Exponential function, base 2, it's increasing, it's 1 to 1, it has an inverse. But the easiest way to find the inverse would be to find some points, switch the coordinates, one, zero, or zero, 1 becomes 1, 0, 1, 2 becomes 2, 1, 2, 4 becomes 4, 2, you get a graph that looks kind of like this. So this is the graph of log base 2 of x, which is the inverse function for 2 to the x. What do you notice? Well, first of all, it has a vertical asymptote on the negative y-axis, and the reason is because 2 to the x has a horizontal asymptote along the negative x-axis. The, uh, domain and the, the, the domain and range of the log base 2 of x, just like any log function, you switch the domain and range of the exponential function. So that's why the domain of any log function is 0 to infinity. That's really important. That, that says you can only take the logarithm of something that's greater than 0. And the range will be negative infinity to infinity because the domain of the exponential function is negative infinity to infinity. So they all pretty much look the same. The graph of all the log functions looks pretty much the same, as long as the base is greater than 1. So would you be too surprised if I told you, if you wanted to graph uh, f of x equals natural logarithm of x, that the graph would look kind of like um, log base 2 of x? Because e to the x looks a lot like 2 to the x, right? And sure enough, the graph looks kind of like this. Uh, what you could do to graph it, of course, is um, Instead of doing what, what, what we just did, you could also just make a table of values. We know how to compute these values. Natural logarithm of 1 is 0. Natural logarithm of e is 1. Natural log of e squared is 2, and so on. So the graph looks kind of like this. The domain, the thing you're taking the logarithm of, the natural logarithm of, must be greater than 0. So the domain is 0 to infinity, and the range is negative infinity to infinity. So now that you know what the graph of the natural logarithm of x looks like, let's look at some translations of that. Suppose you wanted to sketch the graph of f of x equals the natural log of x plus 1. Now remember, this is a horizontal shift 1 to the left, right? So I guess the question I'm asking is, what does that do to the domain? Well, when you shift the graph 1 to the left, instead of having a vertical asymptote at um, 0, x equals 0, it's going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. So the domain becomes negative 1 to infinity now. But there's a nice algebraic way to find that. You don't really have to graph the function to find the domain. This thing inside the parentheses is called the argument. In this case, it's x plus 1. Whatever you take the natural log of has to be greater than 0. So just set x plus 1 greater than 0, solve for x. You would, you would sub, subtract 1 from both sides. There's your domain. x is greater than negative 1. The range is negative infinity to infinity. All right, let, let's do some more. This one, um, we have f of x equals the natural logarithm of x minus 2. So I want to look at the graph of this, and also um, state the domain and range. Before we even graph it, can you tell me what the domain is? The domain, what's inside the logarithm, x minus 2, you ha has to be greater than 0. So if you add 2 to both sides, you get x is greater than 2. And sure enough, the graph is consistent with that. When, when you shift the graph 2 to the right, you've, you've shifted the vertical asymptote 2 to the right, so the domain would be 2 to infinity. The range is still negative infinity to in infinity. How about this last one here? What if you wanted to um, find the domain of this and, and sketch the graph? Notice the 2 is not inside the logarithm. You are taking the logarithm of just x. So the domain is clear. The domain will be x greater than 0. The graph, when you shift the graph up 2 units, it really doesn't affect the graph all that much. The, the vertical asymptote stays the same. and the, and the, So, so the, the domain is 0 to infinity, and the range is still negative infinity to infinity. Okay, let, let's focus mainly on the domain for just a minute. I'll, I'll do a couple, then I'll give you some to try. How about that? What's the domain of this natural logarithm function? The argument, the thing inside the logarithm, must be greater than 0. So you set 2x plus 3 greater than 0, solve for x, you get x is greater than negative 3 halves. So it's negative 3 halves to infinity. This one's a little harder. What's the domain of f of x equals the natural logarithm of 9 minus x squared? The thing inside the parentheses, the argument, must be greater than 0. So how do you solve this quadratic inequality? 
you could use section 1.7 1, 1 uh, a sign chart to solve the quadratic inequality but it might be easier just to solve it graphically let's just look at the graph of y equals 9 minus x squared it's a quadratic function that opens down the question is when is 9 minus x squared greater than 0 is the same as when is the graph above the x-axis it's above the x-axis from negative 3 to 3 so that's the domain okay well let me give you a couple to try hit the pause button and see if you can find the domain of these two uh, logarithm functions. Okay, for the first one, be careful here. It looks like it might be undefined, but remember, what's inside the argument must be greater than zero. If negative x is greater than zero, then x must be less than zero when you multiply by negative one. So there's your domain, negative infinity to a zero. And if you think about it, it should make sense because this is this is a reflection of the not of a natural logarithm function across the y-axis, isn't it? This one's kind of sneaky. What's the domain of this logarithm function? What's inside the parentheses must be greater than zero. So again, I would suggest I would suggest using a, a graphical approach to this. Look at the graph of y equals x squared minus x, which actually factors. It's a quadratic function with x intercepts at zero and one, and it opens up. So when is the graph above the x-axis? From negative infinity to zero and from 1 to infinity. There's your domain. Okay, good. Uh, let's do uh, a couple more things and I'll give you some of these to try as well. We're going to turn now to finding the, in, finding the algebraic formula for the inverse function using our inverse function um, methods. Remember how to do that? If you, let, if you want to find the inverse of this function, we first let y equal, instead, y equal f of x. Then you switch x and y, right? You switch x and y. So you get x equals the natural log of 2y plus 3. Now, how do, you, how do you solve for y? The way you solve for y is to uh, use the definition of logarithm. Remember what we talked about in the last video? This logarithm equation could be written as an exponential equation. And then when you solve for y, you would, um, oh, here we are. Just to finish this problem, you would um, subtract 3 and divide by 2. There's your inverse function. f inverse of x equals e to the x minus 3 all over 2. Let's do one more, and then I'll give you some to try. So if you want to find the inverse of this function, first let's, let's let y equal 2e x, 2 e to the x plus 1. Switch x and y. And then uh, the way you would solve this is we're going to use the definition of logarithm, but you can't do that until you divide by 2 first. Um, you, you divide by 2, and now you can use the definition of, of logarithm. You can rewrite this exponential equation as a log, logarithmic e equation. You end up with... Um, logarithm of x over 2 equals y plus 1, so when you subtract 1, y equals natural log of x over 2 minus 1, so there's your inverse function. Okay, well here we go. Let me give you a couple to try here. See if you can find the inverse function of these two functions. Okay, for the first one, uh, you, let's let y equal 2 to the x minus 4. Then we switch x and y, so you get down to here. Now we're going we're gonna to use the definition of logarithm. We're going to write this exponential equation as a logarithmic equation. But before we do that, we have to um, first um, get the exp exponential part by itself. So we would add 4 to both sides. Now we can do it. You'd rewrite this as y equals log base 2 of x plus 4. And that's your, that's your answer. f inverse of x equals log base 2 of x plus 4. Okay, let's do this, this one. On this one... Um, uh, find the inverse, you would uh, let y equal 3 ln x plus 2. You'd switch x and y, so you get x equals 3 ln of y plus 2. We, again, we, we can't quite use the definition of logarithm yet. You first have to divide by 3. Now you can rewrite this log equation as an exponential equation. Uh, that would be y plus 2 equals e to the x plus 3. You would subtract 2, and there's your answer. f inverse of x is e to the x over 3 minus 2. Uh, we've got a couple, minute, a couple seconds left. Let me show one, one thing on this first one we were talking about for this um, log function. You can actually verify, you can actually show that they're inverse functions by showing that the composition is x. Now remember, the function was 2 to the x minus 4. The inverse function is log base 2 of x plus 4. So f of f inverse becomes f of log base 2 of x plus 4. What does f do? It, it raises 2 to that power and subtracts 4. The 2 can cancels with the log base 2. You get x plus 4 minus 4, and so you just get x. So you can, you can do that. You can, you, can, you can look at the composition of these two functions and get x back. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.